So, canonical ensemble. So, those are the relation between thermodynamics and microcanonical ensemble that I given to you. You, I have given in the book certain problems and I should mention to you that the, the entirety, the entire solution book, all the solution of the problems are, uh, I think one of you probably should work out in the class the problems, entire problem set that is now available uh, online free. Uh, if you have bought a book or anybody in a bought book, then you will be able to download load the solution book. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so and that solution book itself is about 200 pages because it is a huge number of problems in this book. Okay, but you need to do the solution because there are examples, there are there are problems which let you calculate omega and they calculate the properties. So that is very essential part of the problem. Now going over to canonical ensemble. Canonical ensemble now is the ensemble where the system is characterized now by NVT. So you cannot change number that is kept fixed. You cannot change volume kept fixed. So your volume is fixed. Now. So these are well, the volumes are different, NVT, NVT, all are the same and the, I am thinking of systems of ensemble, but the energy is changing now. So the systems are in, in, a, in connected with the bar. Now we will do a beautiful mental uh, construction that gives it, which is how to construct. So, basic strategy that gives it is the following. So, here we have number fixed, volume fixed, but energy exchange is allowed. Energy exchange allowed such that temperature is, uh, temperature is constant. So, you put it in a bath and we in chemistry you know, always do these experiments, you put it in a bath and uh, to preserve the constant temperature. Now, then how did Gibbs did the calculation? Okay, now let me first ask you one thing that when I let my energy constant go, which is you know we grew up with the conservation of energy and we grew constant energy, we let it go. We let, we let it go and replace it by a constant temperature. What is the change in this microscopic state of the system? Yes, absolutely. So, it can have many different energies. So, conservation energy is gone. Conservation energy is a huge constraint. A, all of them, they are constraints. But we work with, in a natural system or everywhere in the world with constraints. But here we let go the energy constraint. We were having in temperature. So, we kind of let, we not kind of, we let a macro variable go or extensive property go and replaced it by an intensive property, okay. So what will happen now to the microscope, number of microscopic states? It will increase, it will increase enormously, right, okay. Now this is an example, I believe is a very nice example, okay. So basic idea then is the following, these are not the best pictures, but we walked around with the pictures. The way it is. Uh, Canonical ensemble is NVE, so I have a huge number of systems, I can put them together and I can, uh, uh, so I can, this is a construction gives it, so we will come to that construction in a minute. This is the, I think one of the best thing in this whole of statistical mechanics, ha, huh, here. Here now, I have the same, same example, my four systems. But now I need make the energy levels change, okay. So now his energy is 6, their 8 is 10. I have same energy levels. But now before I had only 4, right, I had only 4. 
but now I have this additional microscopic scales. You are keeping the energy uh, temperature fixed from outside. You are putting it in a bath. You know the temperature. Just like earlier, I know, I knew NVE. That was my choice of my system. Here my choice of variables is the NVT. So I have the systems which are same as uh, number of each, each, um, uh, okay. My, in my system, NV and T, that means, you know, this is very standard experiments we do that we have this number of volume and uh, density fixed total number of in, in a beaker total number of a uh, then in a volume in a cell volume is constant then you put it in a temperature uh, outside temperature so as an experimentalist or in my thought experiment i can always keep these three fixed from outside so they are fixed from outside means what the connection to both of you asked the questions that means i am freedom to vary these things I do not have freedom to vary other things. I have freedom to vary these things. Like I had freedom to vary NVE. And as a varying NVE, pressure is varying. Here also I have, these are my three independent variables. Okay. Now, I do not have energy con uh, uh, conservation, energy constant. However, I know if I keep the temperature fixed, then energy is getting exchanged. The system is exchanging energy with the bath. If the system is changing energy in the bath, then I have different energies. So, as the different energies are there in the same number of microscopic states, because the system is the same, I will have the, uh, oh, sorry, the microscopic energy levels, I will have many more, there I have four, I have many more microscopic states. But of course, let me ask you a question, of course. Constancy of temperature and variation of energy allows very different states. But there is a very powerful, very, very powerful equation. Actually, one of the most important equations that comes out of statistical mechanics that came out of Boltzmann's work that, that allows you to say which of these arrangements is more probable. Which is that? So, when I allow energy to change, uh, listen carefully, I think I am not formulating it well. I am telling you, I am allowing energy to change, but systems always have a spring in them. Systems just like volume, there is a spring and in energy there is a spring. And I tell you the spring, the spring in energy is the specific heat. Spring in volume is the compressor, uh, isothermal compressibility. Okay, these are all the springs. That means which holds system together. It doesn't allow it to change. Actually, you can write down the free energy or any en as a function expansion, and you can see that they are uh, first order is zero because of the uh, minimum uh, energy free energy minimum condition. Second term of this, uh, we call it response functions, which we'll deal with at, at quite extensively later. That is one of the very important outcome of this. In my book, when I wrote this chapter, I called realization of, uh, from ensemble realization and, and the fluctuation of chapter, I said realization of the promises because that is the first time StatMac gave, which was done by Einstein, the most remarkable predictions that comes. Okay. So, I am asking you a question now. If I give you this kind of thing in a more general sense, many more energy levels, much higher energy, but in the system, that which of the energy is more probable. What is that? There is a distribution which will come out. But you, all of you know that. You know that from high school days. Boltzmann distribution. So, though energy is fluctuating across because of constancy of temperature, there are in a probable distribution of the energy. So, when we, when we relax the constraint of constant energy and in, in, uh, as a result of the constraint, we get all these different, uh, different arrangements or different occupation of the microscopic state and different microscopic states. There is some another, there is a constraint that comes. So, we relax a constraint, but you get a constraint in terms of distribution. This happens again and again. The same thing happens 
in the case of grand canonical ensemble or other ensembles, but that is one of the beautiful uh, of these uh, thing. Okay. So, go back, let us see how a constructed Gibbs went around doing it. And this, as I told you, it is a beautiful construction that Gibbs did. What Gibbs said, okay, I assume that all my systems are at made at, I put, I put all my systems together, all my NVT together in contact with each other. And then I billions and billions of, uh, of my uh, microcanonical ensemble systems put together. And then I put them in contact, then I, I put them in an isolated, I put a box around them and I, I isolate it constantly, completely. So now each of these system is an NVT system. This is NVT, this is NVT, this is NVT. But I have put them in contact, they are NVT, they can exchange energy. So instantaneously each of these states are in different energies. Okay. Now, I from a super ensemble, I all of them I put in contact and I now added the energies of all of them and it is a very large number of ensemble of ensemble and I put isolate them, then I can talk of my super ensemble, I, I insulate it, my super ensemble is a total number of n. So, I have this number of italicized n and this is my total number of ensembles, total number of microcanonical ensembles in the system. So, so now I put, I create an ensemble uh, out of this ensemble, that means now my NVT each of my system here are at NVT, but instantaneously they are NVT, but they are have different energies, right. So when I put them together, I have a huge number, n of them I put them together, then I isolate them, then I make ensemble out of that ensemble, my super ensemble. Then I, that my super ensemble, each of them is a concept of an ensemble, they themselves are in having this number of, this number of volume and this number of uh, particles, but energy will have a sum here, there is a constraint. And this was then, because the only thing that I have, you have to understand, the only thing that I have is this formula. That why I said that everything follows from that. The only thing that I have this formula. So now what I am trying to construct, I am trying to construct when I go to canonical ensemble, I want to construct an ensemble of ensemble such that my in my super ensemble, each ensemble is a uh, microcanonical ensemble is a microcanonical ensemble. Okay. Is a, I, I saying this one after another brilliant construction and it is very difficult uh, to a of that. Then one, what one does, there is a, I have discussed it quite a bit here, um, but I just want to do the math. So now, if I now have in my ensemble, this is the number of systems that have my energy here, then that has to be. I, this is here the index is, is not capital N, it is total number in S and uh, so then NI total number. So, the, so the, let me denote this NJ by the number of systems in energy level EJ. So then total number with the total number of things in the energy level CJ are the total number in my, uh, in my uh, super ensemble and then the population NJ is in energy level EJ, then multiply they get the total energy EJ. So the notation I say, I personally when I teach, I actually this italicize n, but here the italicize n has become capital N and capital T. So this is total energy, EJ is energy of one of my system 
in my ensemble and I have made, I said, microgranical ensemble of the ensemble of ensemble. And this is the condition because this is the total number. So, NS is the total number of uh, systems in the uh, my uh, super ensemble and this is the total number, total energy. So, each, each system, each system in my, uh, in a micro, in a canonical ensemble, constant temperature, but they are in a different energy state. Is there any confusion here? Yeah, you are allowed to make the systems interact with each other and you are giving the condition that they themselves, uh, you keep that system for a, at equilibrium with long time with a bath so that the temperature almost the way we do the simulations. So, the temperature it comes to a constant level at temperature T, then you isolate it, you insulate it completely and that is the um, um, super ensemble. That's how, and then you call, call that super, that, so the ensemble of, okay, number of particles of microcanonical system you put together and construct a canonical, a system in canonical ensemble, NVT. Then you put ensemble of those things and that has a constant uh, total number of particles. It is not the number of particles in one system, it is the total, you know, and then energy also uh, fluctuating. This is the constant. Is it clear? This is not an easy construction. Hmm. This is a, and, but what you get at the end of the day is of a huge importance. Hmm. This is a very serious business. And usually this thing is not taught in the classes because it is a uh, kind of uh, complicated thing. Okay. Now we are going, as I told you again and again, whole, so we have created a super ensemble which is microcanonical because I have nothing but of this equation to go. So I have to go back to that equation. That's why I have to construct the microcanonical, super microcanonical ensemble and I am working on the super microcanonical ensemble. So I have the super microcanonical ensemble where in uh, is the total number of uh, systems. So it is the total number of systems in my ensemble and total number of systems each of the system has in that energy level. So, in my super ensemble, there is n1 number of uh, systems, not particles, n1 number of systems in energy level E1, n2 number of systems in energy level E2. And then I can write total number like that. Okay. So, I do the combinatorics. Now, I can de now develop a, a uh, saying and it, this is really extremely important. One can de now one can define that probability of observing a given state n i in energy e i is this quantity. So, here I have done a partitioning. I have said okay, I have in a n i n i systems in energy level e i that has, since they are in constant energy, that has an omega associated with it. Okay. So, that is this omega. Then I, this is normalization because I sum over all the energy levels. The total number of microscopic states is the total is the normalization. But then this gives me probability of observing Ni particles in the A. So, I, I am done an averaging here. So, this is a very important definition in the whole scheme, Gibbs scheme of uh, developing the expression of microcanonical ensemble. Is it clear? So, that means you have to think in terms of a little bit because this Nj a number of systems at a energy level J. Since you, the, the reward you are getting since you have fixed these things as constant energy, I can talk of this and it makes sense because omega 
is number of microscopic states of a system with a given NV and energy. All right. Okay. Now, game we are going to play now. So, this is right. You can guess what you are going to do. So, we have defined probability of observing a system with a energy E, Ej, and we have the total number. However, we know in total number there are these two constraints. But so, this is not an unconstrained, this is not an unconstrained variable anymore, sorry. So, uh, this has this to constrain. So, what is the way we do it? I. So, anybody has any clue how to go about it now? Okay. Just like before, we are going to do a... Uh, uh, we will do the, um, uh, we will maximize ln omega uh, and from the combinatorics I get this equation. Any confusion there? Okay. Now, I want to maximize this quantity. Any confusion there? However, there is not the way you do that. There is a way to do this. There is a uh, condition called they call the uh, AF condition of Lagrange multiplier. When you have a variation, but with subject to the constraint, so when I have these two constraint, I have to put these two constraint into my, these two constraint, I have to combine with this equation of uh, this equation with this, uh, this quantity and do you guys know the uh, method of Lagrangian multiplier? This is known, okay. okay. This is the method of uh, a constant, is a um, uh, Lagrangian multiplier, uh, is called method of Lagrangian multiplier of variation of constraints. You have done that? No, no. Okay. So, basic idea is that we have to maximize this quantity we have to find that distribution of Nj. Remember, Nj is number of systems at energy level Ej. However, even though I am allowing systems to vary over different energies, there are priorities. Because of Nv and intermolecular interactions, there are some energy levels which are more populated there are some energy levels which are more populated than other energy levels. Actually, there is a Gaussian distribution and the coefficient of the Gaussian distribution is the specific heat. But that, that comes later. Those very fundamental things comes later. Right now, we are trying to get, okay, I give you the energy levels, I allow you to choose your energy, but the system has a constraint system because of the total energy is conserved in the, by my uh, super ensemble, total number is conserved in my to, uh, ensemble. The variation, so the, the omega, the, that particular distribution, so what I am talking of this NJ is a distribution and I am after this distribution, okay. So, so NJ is number of systems in energy level EJ, okay. Let me write down. And I am allowing these energy levels to change because I do not have a conservation of energy or constancy of energy anymore. So, this, those my arrows, so I have many different energy levels, however, my systems prefer certain energy levels, all the energy levels are not, uh, not a, uh, when you do the computer simulation, what do you see? You see the energy and the energy is fluctuating, but they fluctuate around the value. That value is the average and also the most probable. Now, you plot a probable distribution of the energy, what do you find? you find the Gaussian distribution. 
who determine what is the average value and who determines what is the um, uh, that, uh, that the width of the distribution. Width of the distribution is given by the specific heat. Who determines that what average energy it will be? It is by the intermolecular interactions and density and volume N and V. Intermolecular interactions N and V that determine your so now those things must be there put in in a constraint and those are the constraint. So a distribution is there which I have to maximize but that any distribution will not do. Those distributions obey the total number of particles that I have is constant. I have written those equations here. Total number of my energy in the grand canonical because after all I will be working in the grand uh, my, going back to my canonical ensemble. So the way that is done picking up a distribution of many distributions. So I have a distribution of distributions picking up a distribution out of that distribution is uh, that those distributions that follow this constraint. And this is a method of Lagrangian multiplier please uh, uh, a that uh, I have a appendix uh, on uh, microcanonical uh, the Lagrangian multiplier in the book. So then we do this maximize with this constraint this is the way to make a Lagrangian multiplier and then you take this derivative you can you get omega you put the omega which we did here in the this is the omega and you do the Starling's approximation okay and uh, then you get this constraint and this is just a constant you can see now in j to the power alpha beta, uh, beta j and so n j star become this quantity. So this is the YOLO equation is the equation that comes out from these things. Huh? Hmm. Exactly, that is a very, very good question. Actually, that is an excellent question. So, we will come to that. Uh, that is an excellent question. This is the Boltzmann distribution. And you are right, and, but I will come to that in, in a minute. So, I think we will probably, with that answer of your question, we will stop today. As I said, that is you know, one of the, uh, again, the questions, just like the questions you guys asked, is a cause of confusion. So, but you are okay with this now, right? Okay. So now, I have to get this quantity here e to the power minus r. So, I do sum over nj. If I do sum over nj and I sum over e to the power minus beta j, then I kind sum over nj is the total number n and then this, this is the quantity this, this e to the power minus beta j e to the power alpha because this n is the a so then you get pj is nj by n from there you get z to the minus beta j by two this quantity is okay because just I sum over that. So this is the definition that we started to do the probability of finding a system so because we work with systems number of systems in a j it is not number of particles in a c in a j double j it is number of systems in a j double and so the probability of observing a system in a energy, energy EJ is this quantity and this quantity is the canonical partition function. And so if I write the canonical partition function here that I have written later then this is the one of the most fundamental equation of statistical mechanics which now tells you how we have not yet shown that beta is temperature but we will show that that beta is temperature. For that we have to do an analysis very similar to what we did with the Euler equation uh, in, in, in a microcanonical ensemble that we will do. Now I will just be, before we stop I will uh, answer this uh, very good question. What you have to do now in order to get out that so probability of Pj is uh, uh, you know pj is equal to the minus beta h is now what you do you define the average energy e and then average energy e is uh, uh, 
all right because this body is creation it is these quantities which is gaussian so now you consider your average energy is is the uh, e, e, this you make a fluctuation delta e and from here now you calculate the that's exactly we'll do later we calculate the variation of energy so now you say since energy your average energy the way this system is is the, is the one which, which which minimizes the free energy so first derivative of that goes to zero so your uh, in the, the energy then uh, it is like that your energy e is e average plus first derivative is zero then second derivative is uh, d2 a d2 delta e square uh, so your uh, variation of free energy and then because first derivative is zero so now probability in in this in is e to the power minus delta a and that is e to the power minus e goes out and you get e to the power minus delta e square so a really very good question that boltzmann distribution has within it the gaussian distribution but this is boltzmann distribution where you are asking what is the individual energy what is the population of individual energy levels gaussian that you observe is the total energy so in simulation when you find a gaussian distribution of energy that is the total energy not the individual energy the energy of system yeah no or any observed system when you look at the observed total energy of a system is the total energy average energy or in observed energy that you have this is not the observed energy this is the one confusion you always have because when you do spectroscopy in quantum mechanics we consider this is the energy that you observe in spectroscopically but those are isolated single non interacting uh, picture when you are allowing energies to exchange like in 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 a macroscopic system so harmonic systems then this is the pj is the probability that your system is an energy ej we use that same there also but when i talk of gaussian distribution is the total macro variable total macroscopic energy that is the gaussian and that comes from there by same de uh, de definition but you define the total energy by that equation uh, my average energy of that equation then you say my free energy is the one that is minimum at the average energy e that property you use and then you get the gaussian distribution at equilibrium at equilibrium okay look look let, let us look at that these are the uh, construct we gave uh, we did because as i told you there's only equation that you have is uh, entropical kb ln omega so we did the construct made of a super uh, ensemble which is microcanonical so we started with the ensemble which is canonical then we put many canonical ensembles together and i put a super ensemble microcanonical ensemble in the microcanonical ensemble i now can talk of number of system in energy level nj then i can do and construct the omega now and that omega has the constraint of total number of systems and total energy because i have i have a microcanonical uh, so a microcanonical has constant energy and constant n now i put those constraint by using lagrangian multiplier and i get uh, that article out okay that is the whole uh, game that he played uh, gives played okay now now you are asking say the, so the the gaussian energy is gaussian volume is gaussian all these things so in a computer simulation we are studying this you are talking of a single system but you are talking of a trajectory for long time or you can take a monte carlo simulation where you are doing you are creating many many configurations of the system which is same as creating many systems okay right now you are talking of average energy so when we plot we plot the energy of the system either along a trajectory or in monte carlo and i have a histogram i have a, a this many energy this many uh, time my system is in this energy but that is the macroscopic total observed energy 
This is not what you observe. This is what the microscopic occupation of the system. And we find out from this distribution what is the energy, average energy, that just what I wrote down, we will do it tomorrow. And what is the entropy? What are the other properties? We have not done that. We have just like in microcanonical ensemble we have done, we have done got that important equation. That is, is a Boltzmann distribution. And from there now we will construct the rest of the things. Hmm. So that we will do uh, tomorrow 10.30, right?